Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into an interesting night of astrophotography. It's October 6, 2025, the night of the full supermoon, which means the sky is super bright and not ideal for collecting deep sky data on most targets. But hey, there is no reason to sit and do nothing, right? Instead, I'm turning this into an opportunity to compare how the same deep sky object looks through four of my different telescopes. In particular, we're targeting NGC 281, also known as the Pac-Man Nebula. It is an emission nebula that glows brightly in hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 wavelets, and I'm planning to image this nebula using narrowband filters, of course, and collect a close amount of exposure time on each rig. Now, let me tell you about each telescope setups in detail. Alright guys, so the first telescope is SV Boeing 70 ED, in particular all right, had to boom my glasses on because the sun is way too bright. So the first telescope I got here is SV Boeing SV503 70ED telescope. It is an upgraded version of the current SV Boeing uh, SV503 telescope, and in particular, this one is so-called quadruplet telescope. It has a built-in flattener uh, element, like a dented telescope, that allows you to have a pretty sharp stars around all the corners when using. Uh, this SV503 with an APS-C size sensor. And in particular here I have CWO 2600MC Pro uh, color camera with IMX571 sensor. For guiding, as you can see, I use an off-axis guider. And yet, despite the camera being a color camera, I use a filter wheel that has uh, some like dual narrowband filters, light pollution filters, and etc. So the telescope itself is on loan from SV Boini, and I'm about to post my first video review of this rig uh, maybe within the next couple of weeks after posting this video comparison of all the four telescopes. And uh, if you guys are interested in watching the video review of this one, then consider subscribing to the channel. And now let's go to the second rig. All right, guys, so I'm sure you all recognize this little one. It is a Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope that was sent to me by Dwarf Lab a few months back in. And I already have my first video review of the telescope that I posted a few weeks ago. I personally image with Dwarf only in the EQ mode as the process of polar aligning takes literally a like couple of minutes but the results that you get when polar aligning the dwarf, they're much better compared to uh, images that you take in alpha azimuth mode. But anyway, the simplicity of the dwarf is really its huge benefit. And uh, if you're a beginner, then this telescope is the option that can be considered. Although the quality of images, of course, would be lower compared to like even this SV Boeing 70 ED telescope, but more on that later. The next telescope is Skywatcher 150 PDS. As you can see, it's a totally different telescope from the first one and the one that's behind me. And in particular, this one is a reflector type telescope, meaning instead of using a lens, it has a main mirror at the end that reflects the light to the secondary mirror and uh, the light with the image basically goes into the camera over here. So I won't this one for quite some time now, but really didn't have a chance to use a lot after I switched to uh, this deep sky rig. And then when I got another EQ6R Pro mount, uh, as you saw in my previous videos, I mostly used it for uh, mid LX200 EMC telescope. But later on, what I eventually did is I switched mid LX200 and I put it back on the dual fork mount. And I have some nice planetary images taken with the telescope. So since EQ6R Pro was not used, I kind of put this Skywatcher 150 PDS telescope back in. And with this one, I use SV Boeing SV405 CC camera, which is exactly the same as ZWO 294MC. And uh, over here, I have a filter drawer with SV Boeing SV220 uh, 7 nanometer dual narrowband filter installed. Uh, unlike on my 70 ED telescope, I use a traditional guide scope for guiding. And uh, yep, this is how everything looks like on this rig. All right, guys, and finally, behind me is my main deep sky imaging rig. It is a 122mm SV Boeing C550 APA telescope that I've constantly used for the past two years. So this telescope is fully automated. I have a TopeTech IMX571 monochrome camera with all the filters. I use an off-axis guiding. And um, yeah, this telescope is installed, of course, on EQ6R Pro mount that has a pier because the telescope itself, as you can see, it's pretty long. And uh, without the pier, the camera would always hit the legs, I wouldn't be able to take like as many images during the meridian flip part as I am now. 
and uh, yeah, I have the flat panel and uh, like the rotator and all the accessories I need to run this telescope fully remotely. And honestly, this one is kind of quite ready to be sent to a remote observatory. And I'm, th I'm still thinking about it. Of course, like having a Bortle 1, a Bortle 2, dark skies is a really huge benefit. And uh, when the weather is always nice, it's also good. But I also kind of like to be like around the telescope all the time, if you know what I mean. So I don't know yet, guys. Maybe I'm going to send it next year, maybe not. But this telescope is installed over here. And uh, as this one and many other rigs, I keep outside 24-7. Whenever I have precipitations, I just cover the telescopes and uh, I have no issues. I mean, unlike uh, the issue that I had with this telescope where I got it rained upon last year, and the video will be also in the corner, so you can check it out, guys. But other than that, everything has been working really smoothly for the past few years, and uh, I'm quite happy with the images I get under my Bortle, like 4.5 skies. So each of these telescopes falls under different categories and budgets. The easiest one, in my opinion, would be Dwarf 3, simply because it's kind of plug-and-play type of telescope. You just point it, hopefully, you polar align it, and... Um, that's it guys, you just gotta press a couple of buttons in the phone and uh, you begin imaging. Uh, other tricks, in the meanwhile, they're also fully automated and uh, of course they were built under heavier budgets and uh, these rigs should of course deliver better quality images and uh, you guys gonna see my final images at the end of the video so you'll compare yourself how they look like and uh, yeah guys, all I have to do now I believe is just to wait simply till uh, it gets darker. It's not gonna get really dark since we have full moon in the sky but we'll see how the night goes and I guess I'll see you guys during the imaging session then. Alright guys, I'm in the middle of my imaging session and so far everything's been going really really well and let's take a look at the sub-exposures that I have over here. So right now we're connected to my 122mm SV Boini SV550 telescope and uh, over here we have Oxygen 3 imaging as of now. This is the 5 minute sub-exposure and yeah of course Oxygen uh, this nebula doesn't have a lot of oxygen, like, naturally, and uh, with the full moon, things don't look really well as of now. Uh, a few hours ago, I was imaging uh, hydrogen alpha, and I'm going to show you one of the sub-exposures in a second. This is how hydrogen alpha sub-exposure looked like. Uh, I also had 5-minute uh, sub-exposure over here, and of course, we can see much more details on the hydrogen alpha image. Now, let's take a look at dwarf 3. So... Over here I have my screen mirroring tool called Screen Copy, which basically allows me to control Dwarf Telescope remotely, and uh, I do that by uh, connecting the Android phone to the computer, and using this Screen Copy tool I can control Dwarf. This is how sub-exposure looks like. Actually, on the Dwarf tree it's not sub-exposures, it's a stacked image, and we have almost 300 frames stacked. Uh, I'm imaging 60 second sub-exposures at gain 60 with a dual narrowband filter, of course. Now let's take a look at Skywatcher 150 PDS telescope. This is also the same Pac-Man Nebula, 5 minute sub-exposure taken with uh, SV Boini SV405 CC camera, which is kind of the same as uh, ZWO294 MC. And uh, yep, that's the color camera, and I use that with SV Boini SV220 700 meter dual narrowband filter. Of course, with uh, this type of camera, we have M glow in this right corner, and there is a bit of M glow in the left corner. But yeah, this is how image looks like. And finally, let's take a look at my SV Boini 70 ED quadruplet telescope. So yeah, the telescope has much smaller focal lengths, and we have a wide view of uh, Pac-Man Nebula. There is not a lot of details of the nebula. Like for example, if we take a look at a C550 telescope and the hydrogen alpha image. So this is oxygen, uh, let's take a look at the hydrogen alpha image. By the way, yeah, IMX 571 sensor, uh, monochrome camera, a lot of details on a single exposure. This is the same IMX 571 sensor, color camera, and of course, yeah, because the telescope has much smaller aperture, 70 millimeters versus 122 millimeters uh, in aperture, we have like lesser amount of details on the image but larger field of view so yeah guys this is how my single exposures look like and uh, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below guys of course i know it's kind of hard to judge based on what you see on the screen and kind of it's not the high resolution <laughs> image right
All right, guys, so I just finished stacking all the images and let's take a look at the results. Uh, on the screen, there is a Pixinsight app and here we got five stacked images that I got from all of my telescopes. The image on the left is the one taken with a uh, SV Boini. Oops, not SV Boini. The image on the left is the one taken with a Skywatcher 150 PDS telescope. These two images taken with 122 millimeter SV 550. The image on the left is a narrowband HOO version and the image on the right is just RGB image where I'm basically gonna take just uh, like information about the stars. I'm sure you can recognize that this one is taken with Dwarf and the final one is the one that's taken with uh, SV Boini a 70 ED quadruplet telescope. Over here I also got a kind of uh, quick information about all like the main specs uh, on the gear in the exposure time, so on a dwarf, can you imagine that I got almost 8 hours of integration time, with a 150PDS I got a bit over than 6 hours worth of integration time, and uh, as a reminder I used SV-27 nm dual narrowband filter and sv Boini SV-405cc camera. The, these two images, this one and this one, I got with SV-550 5-inch APO, uh, Topetech MX 571 monochrome camera and Scorpio RGB and 5 nanometer hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 filters. So yeah, I got 30 minutes in RGB and I got 41 uh, 5 minute sub exposures in hydrogen alpha and 43 sub exposures in oxygen 3. And the final image, the one that's uh, over here, is the one taken with a 70 d once again. And here actually uh, Pix inside stacked 100 five minute sub exposures. So, um, I mean, I don't know what I can show you guys. I guess I can close RGB one because there is kind of no point in comparing the results, right guys? So the one that's with the most amount of details, of course, is the image taken with SV Boini SV550 telescope. And you can see, despite the fact that I was imaging during the full moon, I got pretty nice uh, image. I mean, considering the low integration time and uh, the full moon in the sky. Of course, there is not a lot of information about the background and uh, the image. I mean, you can see that uh, only Pac-Man Yabla pops out really brightly and uh, you can see like the huge contrast between the Nebula and the background. So we'll see how the processing goes. And so the second image is the one taken with 150 PDS. Uh, you can see that the background is ruined, although I tried to cal calibrate it and honestly, the background looked even worse before that. Uh, yes, I was taking flat frames, but I believe, I mean, possibly because it's a Newtonian telescope or something, uh, I wasn't just able to properly calibrate uh, the uh, light frames. Uh, and uh, since it's kind of the test night, I didn't really go into details why uh, the background looks the way as it is. Because, for example, I have one of my different images taken with a 150PDS telescope in exactly the same configuration without the moon in the sky and I uh, had no problems with uh, calibration of the image so possibly it's because of the full moon, we'll see but it will be really interesting to see what I'll be able to process and uh, now let's take a quick look at the dwarf image uh, I mean, not a lot of details of course but still we're able to see Pac-Man Nebula and I won't be able to heavily process this image uh, simply because there is not a lot of like details, I think. But uh, we'll see how it goes anyway. And finally, this one taken with the uh, 70ED telescope. Now, in terms of the details, of course, there will be lesser amount of details compared to 150PDS and 5-inch APO telescope. But, like, I think the image looks okay. Maybe, what do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, same here, guys. I only kind of calibrated the background and uh, this is how the Pac-Man Nebula looks like. So what I'm going to do now guys is, I mean I don't know how long the processing is going to take since uh, th all those images were taken during the full moon, I really don't want to spend a lot of time on processing, uh, but still I'll see how it goes. Alright guys, this is all I've gotten for this video. At the end I will share my final images of the Pac-Man Nebula from each imaging rig. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you guys enjoyed watching this video and the comparison itself, then consider giving this video a like and also subscribe to my channel. I really hope to see you at the next one and until next time.